Hey there, Captain. President Heaton here. After we sent off your ship, we realized we can use the infinite energy drive and super robots we built your vessel with to clean up the planet. It's just easier. Easier? I mean, clearly, if we can build flying, solar-powered laser robots, we can figure out how to recycle aluminum. Our bad. Sorry. Hopefully you haven't been drifting through space for 700 years or anything. <laughs> oh, also, according to our calculations, human life on your spaceship will become unsustainable once your robots achieve sentience and decide to murder all of you. Just FYI. Unsustainable? What? Now, if you'll excuse me, technology has become so awesome in your absence that I'm going to go play Xbox with a holographic dolphin and Kate Uptonbot. Adios! Hello, I'm Andrew Heaton, and you're watching Econ Pop, the show that scans the ravaged wasteland of popular culture to find the seedling of economics within. Today we're diving into my favorite romantic film, Wally. -E. Of course, the fact that I can only relate to the romantic feelings of a cartoon robot may explain why I'm single. But I digress. After all, this isn't just a robo rom com, it's also a tragedy. A tragedy of the commons. Wally -E opens in a post apocalyptic landscape of abandoned buildings, rusting machines, and towering piles of garbage. But this isn't modern day Detroit, it's Detroit in the year 2700. Or it could be. In Pixar's vision of the future, the entire Earth has been transformed into a smoldering wasteland, ravaged by pollution and the excesses of consumerism. Things are grim. Robocop grim. Operation Cleanup has, well, uh, failed. Wouldn't you know, rising toxicity levels have made life unsustainable on Earth. But it isn't all doom and gloom on planet Pixar. Wally -E has an adorable, disgusting cockroach companion. He has a hobby, collecting shiny junk. He even has a VHS copy of the 1969 musical Hello, Dolly, from which he learns essential life skills like dancing and doffing a top hat. Now, Wally -E the robot is a technological wonder, just as Wally -E the movie is an innovative piece of digital filmmaking. However, the film's dystopian vision of overpopulation, resource depletion, and societal collapse is centuries old and has been repeatedly refuted. Too much garbage in your face? There's plenty of space out in space! b l Starliners leaving each day. We'll clean up the mess while you're away. For example, in the 1890s, economists predicted that if New York City continued to grow, it would literally drown in pony poop within 30 years. Back then, shipping, transportation, and glue production all relied on horsepower. Experts envisioned canals of manure crisscrossing Manhattan and exorbitant stilt prices to boot. But they failed to imagine automobiles and electric streetcars and flying recliners, which as everyone who's watched Wally -E knows, will be an integral part of our future transportation infrastructure. Humans are great at projecting today's problems into tomorrow, but we're terrible at foreseeing the solutions we'll ultimately come up with along the way. USB drives have saved more trees in the last 10 years than Arbor Day campaigns have. History teaches us that technological progress doesn't just make us richer, it makes our world cleaner as well. Does that mean everything's hunky-dory? Not quite. In real life, we do see garbage and gutters and public parks and pretty much every reality television program. Yet you hardly ever see litter in people's front yards. Why? In a nutshell, people tend to take better care of things they own. Have you ever washed a rental car? Not me. I use rental cars to transport exotic animals across state lines. I don't clean up after the emu when I'm done. When everyone owns something collectively, nobody has an incentive to take personal responsibility for it. Imagine the common room in a dormitory, or the stairwell in my apartment complex. In Wally, -E, Earth's orbit is littered with space junk. Nobody owns the exosphere, so who's going to clean it? When a resource is commonly shared, there's nothing to stop me or you or anyone from exploiting it. This is known as the tragedy of the commons. Everyone takes, nobody has an incentive to be a steward. The result is a world like the one we see in Wally. -E. Out there is our home, home auto, and it's in trouble. I can't just sit here and, and do nothing. That's all I've ever done. That's all anyone on this blasted ship has ever done. Nothing. One solution is to introduce private property rights. Logging companies don't cut down their trees without planting new ones. Cows are plentiful despite the popularity of hamburgers, whereas lions and unicorns are endangered. Property and the opportunity to profit from it actually promotes sustainability. Another big theme in Wally -E is consumerism. 
Now, you can feel free to lambast consumerism if you're watching this video on some kind of do-it-yourself, hand-carved Amish smartphone. Otherwise, let's just admit we all like buying stuff. There's nothing wrong with buying books or shoes or fun movies about robots. Do I believe that gadgets are the most important thing in life? No. Am I glad I have a microwave? Of course. I'm a bachelor. I would starve to death without one. But the film imagines that consumerism and technology ultimately strip away our humanity. Sure, some people do become lazy and worthless when given the opportunity. I've seen it. I was in a fraternity. But I think most human beings want to live purposeful lives. All of human history is a story of people reaching for new heights just as they attain formerly unimaginable ones. A good many humans use the leisure time they gain from technology to be creative or social. Because when you don't have to spend your days churning butter or hand-washing all of your clothes or hunting and killing whatever kind of animal produces denim, you can dedicate yourself to higher pursuits, like writing ebooks about werewolf romance, or bonding with your family, or bonding with your secret family, or even making movies about robots. I want to live on a clean planet with fresh air and plentiful animals that I can trap and then befriend or eat. But I also know that the world is going to need, among other things, technology and commerce. Otherwise, who gets around to building Wally? -E? And now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show, Subjective Value, where we invite an economist to discuss the film. Today, Julian Simon. Oh, Paul Ehrlich, I saw you on the Johnny Carson talking smack about resource depletion. When it comes to prices, you say that the sky is the limit. You say that space is the place. Well, I've got a bomb to drop on you, Paul Ehrlich. A knowledge bomb. I'm throwing down the gauntlet. Read my lips. The price of tin, tungsten, copper, chromium, and nickel is gonna drop. And when the dust settles, Ehrlich, I'll see you September 29th, 1990, at the Cato Institute. Four stars. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can download the Econ Pop podcast with economist Steve Horwitz, professor of literature Paul Cantor, and myself, available on iTunes.